chilling here in my truck and taking a second here to give a little uh oh hot dog, uh, you know, uh, information. Um, as you guys may uh, be seeing, and hopefully you're tuning into the lives right now for the brilliant Lara FM and DOA, Defender of Ants, um, they are outside Jimmy Kimmel down there on the uh, Hollywood Boulevard uh, because Miss Elizabeth Moss, who is a second gen and uh, last lifetime queer, just like me, um, <clears throat> is on Jimmy Kimmel tonight. And they have so, uh, you know, um, eloquently informed the audience members that she is, in fact, a Scientologist, that The Handmaid's Tale shouldn't be a true story, and that maybe Jimmy should... Um, ask her about Scientology. Like, why isn't she ever pressed about this and her affiliation with it and her, you know, pumping it up? Like, let's get some questions answered here, uh, Beth, about uh, Danny Masterson and your association with Scientology. I mean, you know, <clears throat> unlike the rest of us who were recruited into the Sea Org, you know, because Elizabeth took the acting route, um, she was saved from uh, indentured servitude. I mean, I guess her indentured servitude is to, uh, you know, act and, uh, you know, do all these things. But it's, it's what's interesting to me and what's always pissed me off is that, uh, especially with Elizabeth Moss, okay, there are very strict rules in Scientology about certain things, all right? Um, <clears throat> my hair is all over the place, guys, because I've had a hat on a day. I'm sorry. Um, specifically with rules in regards to drugs, okay? Um, your, your drugs are, are no, right. <clears throat> and going to the doctor also hard pass. Right. Um, but when it comes to like over the counter remedies for yourself to help care for yourself, to help take care of, you know, headaches, um, body aches, things like that, you're really not supposed to like engage in any of that either. Right. Um, you're supposed to do like touch assists, you, you know, nerve assists, PTS handling, all of these things. Right. Um, because it, Scientology fixes everything. Scientology, uh, makes it all better. Um, we all know this is a load of horse swaddle, but that's, that's the going philosophy in Scientology. Right. So when I saw Miss Elizabeth Moss, um, shortly after leaving the Sea Org in an Excedrin campaign, saying out loud that she was a migraine sufferer and that the only thing that could help her migraines was, you know, the, the ultra powerful, not just regular Excedrin, okay, but the ultra powerful Excedrin. And, you know, it was this miracle thing for her. I literally almost like threw my television through a wall because what I want to tell you guys is I, I, I too am a migraine sufferer um, since about the age of seven or eight and never <clears throat> was I allowed um, in the C organization to take any form of painkiller. Okay, like you're working 10, sometimes 15 hours a day with a, a migraine so bad you cannot see, <laughs> but you still have to do your entire job. Um, you're going to, I've thrown up on the job. Um, yeah. Uh, the conditions that we are told to work through, you know, they would give you various things for headaches, niacin. Super good. Uh, vitamin D. Uh, B12 shots. Um, what else was another headache remedy? Vitamin C. Um, drinking water. Um, touch assists. Yeah, all kinds of things. The most thing I got all the time because I had all these chronic migraines is you would get this... Um, uh, one process called the end of endless int rundown. <clears throat> in Scientology, they have a firm belief that, it, it, you know, you're, you're not your body, you're a spiritual being who has a body, right? And uh, when you get very excited about the processes and things that you're doing, 
um, that can cause you to go exterior to your body, to be, you know, like in a third person view, you know, like when you see a movie and they do that camera shot where they like pan out and then you can like see people from like above and stuff like that. <clears throat> so th- apparently that used to happen to me all the time. I'm just so big. I can't fit in my own body, guys. I'm just such a big being. Okay. So uh, they do this rundown. Um, and it, it particularly for people who are clear, who don't have their own reactive mind. Um, and it's a, you can't get any other processes while you are considered out in. Like that means that you've gone exterior to your body and you can't get back in it. It's like, oh no, I'm out here. I can't, where is my body? I don't know. I cannot find that. Oh, I'm lost. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I received that process, I don't know, 50 times. You're supposed to only do it once and then you're supposed to be good on going into and out of objects for the rest of your life. Boop, 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 boop. I mean, the truth of the matter is it never handled me on wanting to blow the sea org. It never handled me on my migraines. It never handled any of that stuff. So you're never supposed to be sponsored by big pharma. You're never supposed to be associated with big pharma, with psychiatry, psychology, any of that. But Elizabeth Moss somehow is allowed to take Excedrin's money, uh, Bayer, one of the largest pharmaceutical countries on the planet, and cash that check, no problem, cha-ching, um, and promote that she takes drugs to handle her headaches, even though she is, at the time, clear, now she's OT. Um, I don't, what? I thought she was cause. I thought she was a Scientologist. Thought everything made sense. Um, <clears throat> did I know Elizabeth in the Church of Scientology? Um, I saw her around. My sister did the PR with her. Um, you know, she's, you know, whatever. She's a second gen. And, and and here's the thing. She's that's how undedicated she is to Scientology. She may have gotten more dedicated in the last few years. Was she in the course room all the time? Was she doing a lot of services? No. No. She just like hides behind the sign. She's she's you know how people call like Republican in name only rhinos. She's a sino. She's a Scientologist in name only. It suits her when she needs to like shield herself against this veil of mysteriousness. But like, look at the shows that she's in and stuff. Like, you know, shiny girls. Like that shit was fucked up. This is like, if you haven't seen that show on Apple TV, it's brilliant. And again, no cap on her acting or any, she's a brilliant actress. She's brilliant. I I will give her that. Handmaid's Tale, she's brilliant. Mad Men, she was brilliant. Okay, like this is not talking about her as an actress she's extremely method which is also not great for the psyche um but not unusual for scientologists they have to completely become in the valence uh, valence that's a scientology term uh, that is the attitude it, it's like a it, like the method right um the stanislavski method where you just become the person Jared Leto is a great example of a method actor um, where they just like study whatever it is they're supposed to become. Um, And then they literally embody the fullness of the character Um, for a lot of people uh, that ends up in death. Heath Ledger is a great example of that. He was also a very method actor. Did not end well for him. uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, another example of method acting. One of his last roles, he played L. Ron Hubbard, guys. Dead. Okay? Not a great choice. Um, yeah. So she's very method. The roles that she takes on are psychologically very twisted. But they always make exceptions for actors and actresses. Except Catherine Bell. Um, yeah. Because she was a real life lesbian. She wasn't just a paid professional lesbian on TV, Laura Prepon. So if you're just getting paid to be a lesbian for TV and you're just pretending to like kissing and fucking Taylor Schilling, then that's okay. 
as long as you're pretending that touching her beautiful, perfect breasts is just, that's just not for you. Just acting. Anybody seen Orange is the New Black? Give me a break, Laura. Some of that. Girl, some of that wasn't acting. But if you're Catherine Bell and you actually love another woman, then fuck you. Then that's, you know, that's, uh, yeah. Yes, uh, that would be accurate. Um, that, uh, oh, I can't. No, I don't want to do any of those things. I can't, I can't pull your comment up. Mrs. Uh, Bramlett Jr., I apologize because I didn't do this through StreamYard. I just did it through YouTube. But yes, Joey, a uh, good friend of mine who I've known since he was a wee lad and I was his school teacher, um, was on Instagram talking about how he was friends with Elizabeth um, when he was still in Scientology and then she disconnected from him. Too sweet. Yeah, um, that makes sense. You can't uh, stay friends with anybody when they say bad words about Scientology. I, I, here's the deal, guys. Elizabeth. Erica Christensen, all these second gen guys. There's there's nothing in Scientology for them. Juliette Lewis, why the fuck is she staying in Scientology? They basically threw her dad away like a piece of trash as soon as he got Alzheimer's. Okay. Her dad, Jeff Lewis, who was one of the most dedicated Scientologists, a great actor, fabulous guy. As soon as he became old and decrepit, they could give two shits about him. Nobody was there for him from Scientology um, on his deathbed, and yet she's sticking with him. She's she's in the Scientology camp. She didn't want to hear nothing bad about him. She didn't want to hear about Danny Masterson. She didn't want to hear about children in Scientology. Juliet, who do you think is doing all this stuff for you all these years? Like, she's a Delphi kid. She went to Delphi, for Christ's sake, here in Oregon. Like, give me a break. Oh, no, Juliet didn't leave, honey. No, she's still very much in Scientology. Um, <clears throat> the only second gens or third gens that have really probably left is like Riley Keough. Um, you know, and then we heard that Priscilla left, which was huge. Um, you know, and, um, unfortunately Lisa Marie didn't make it long enough to tell us her whole story. You know, and I'm really sorry to hear that, that, um, we'll never hear that from her because she's gone now, you know? And her son is one of many um, born in Scientology kids that didn't make it. I know way too many of those guys. Way, 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 way too many uh, born in kids who are not here to talk about it. This is why Serge is out looking fabulous every night. Um to talk about not letting kids in Scientology because the amount of us who survived to tell the tale, uh, the percentage is not high, guys. Um, some of us are still in the Sea Org, um, you know, but um, yeah, it's uh, it's not good. It's not good. Yeah, Laura FM and DOA right now are outside Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, Yes, making their voices heard. Um, I did not go to Delphi. Um, <clears throat> I went to Apple School um, in uh, Northern California as a kid. And then I went to uh, one summer of something else. Now I can't remember. And I taught at Mace Kingsley. Not at Mace Kingsley. I went to a summer of Mace Kingsley. And then I taught. <laughs> there's too many Scientology schools here, guys. And then I taught at um, Lewis Carroll Academy of the Arts, which is no longer a school. All right. Well, guys, again, listen. Um, I'm going to be in the Los Angeles soon. Uh, I'm working on uh, getting together a group of people this weekend to go into Portland um, at some point. Um, I don't know if it's going to be Saturday or Sunday this weekend. Um, but, um, it's in the contract, Elizabeth's contract to go on Kimmel. Yeah, I'm sure it is because, you know, can't say bad things about Scientology. You know, 
or else they won't be guests on things, right? She did a whole Vanity Fair puff piece where she talked for quite a while about Scientology. They managed to get that out of her, and that was recent. And I think that's the last thing that she's going to say publicly about Scientology. Because like I said, she doesn't talk about what she doesn't talk about. She said what she said about Scientology. That's the last thing that she's going to say about it. Because frankly, she doesn't actually do it. She doesn't actually do it. She says out loud statements when she needs to. When somebody harasses her enough to say, "Uh uh-oh, hot dog, we're in trouble. We need to pull out the celebrities. And, you know, she needs to say something, but she's not fucking doing anything right now. Promise you. Where, where's her completions? Where's her certificates? She's not doing Jack Shinola unless she's doing like her fifth Kira. And if I'm wrong, Elizabeth, come tell me, you know, also Laura Prepon, like, let's have a discussion. Let's talk about your, you know, uh, paid professional lesbianism. Uh, and let's talk about it. I, Catherine, I wish that Juliet has left. Her last interaction with protesters like six months ago was not good. She got asked a direct question about Scientology. She almost knocked somebody out. Um, so if she has left, I would love that. Juliet is a wild child. Um, you know, I, I, I hope everybody leaves. But, you know, she's got some uh, splaining to do. All these guys have got some splaining to do. Um, yeah. And, uh, especially Catherine Bell, who just keeps standing by her man, Scientology. Girl, you're gay. Stop standing by that man. Like, cut it out. You, you, you're done with that. Um, yeah. And this whole, um, yeah, that stinky cat, you're on it. Moss is a horrible person for leaving the room when Leah won her Emmy and for also giving the finger to a photographer on the same night. Yes. Um, you know, and then she tries to pretend like, oh, that's not what I just had to go. I just happened to have go to the bathroom. Right. As they were announcing Leah, like, but you know, that's not what happened. Like they were going to say things about Scientology and you know that the camera people were going to pan to you and you were going to get in some massive ethics trouble if you didn't get up and get out of there. She, she had to do that, guys. If she didn't, she would have had to pay for, like, bajillion dollars in sex checks. Um, you know. So, yeah. That would just be suck, 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 suck. Um, yeah. All right. Well, it is basically time for me to clocky, clocky back in to work. But I'm getting excited, guys. 24 days. And I'm going to be down there in L.A., It's going to be a brief trip, um, but oh, so worth it back in the city of my birth and um, going to be kicking booty, taking some names and um, getting some getting some things done. So I'm excited about that. And, uh, you know, we're going to start getting some protests happen up here in the Pacific Northwest also, because, you know, I'm not letting these guys up here off the hook uh, just because it's not Hollywood. And I love seeing all these other protests going on in Chicago, uh, down in Austin, uh, on the East Coast, at the founding church in D.C. Um, And let's not forget, please contact your local Congress representative, um, your senators, and ask them personally if they will back an inquiry into revoking Scientology's 501c3 status. This is the most important thing that any of us can do, okay? Um, because if we can get these guys during an election year um, to say, yes, I will back that, you know, um, we can actually make some real moves to make that a real thing, okay? Because once again, I just want to repeat, if two consenting, two or more consenting adults want to sit down in an open space and crack open Lafayette's books, and practice that gobbledygook on each other, have at it. Please enjoy. But no kids can consent. No kids should be forced into uh, forced labor servitude ever, ever, ever. And uh, this group is hiding money laundering, real estate racketeering, child slave labor, human trafficking, under the flag 
of religion in this 501c3 tax exemption. So we have to get that revoked in order to prosecute them for the crimes that they have committed under that veil. All right. So uh, I love you guys. I will talk to you soon and I will see a lot of you soon. All right. And hopefully I will be on a live maybe later tonight or tomorrow. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in. Please hit that like. I would love to get to 10,000 before I get to LA. If we can make that happen. Um, hit that subscribe if you haven't. Uh, and get your friends to subscribe too. All right. I will talk to you guys later.